that was it. A single goal to nil for the French and they got the win that they were looking for. Uh, producer Luke and assistant producer Joe and I were all there to see that last night. Uh, got a trip back to our hotel uh, with the world's nicest taxi driver. What a lovely fellow he was. Uh, we won't forget him in a hurry. Hope to get him again. A charming gentleman from uh, from Dusseldorf here. And alongside Simon and myself uh, this morning is a man who similarly exudes the feel-good factor everywhere he goes. Gabby Bonlahor is uh, with us. In the meantime, though with us here in Dusseldorf I want to shift the emphasis to Paris because that is where we find leading journalists for the newspaper L'Equipe, the team and here's Eric Bilderman. Eric bonjour to you uh, mon ami what is the latest with Kylian Mbappe because last night a very painful injury right at the end uh, and he has himself a broken nose what can you tell us? Yeah good morning to you all my friends um, we are a bit uh uh, less worried than uh, was uh, the situation that his nose, his nose is for sure broken, but it's broken, I would say, in the in a fair way. And he should be able to play with a, a dedicated mask uh, to protect himself. The question mark at the moment is, will it be a gamble to, make, uh, to let him play against uh, Holland on next Friday or not? That's the question mark at the moment. What, what do you think, Eric? What do you think Deschamps will do? Because Mbappe is so central to everything that the French do. And the French supporters here in Germany absolutely love him. Um, so without him, I think he'll be, he'll be a serious miss, no doubt. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, the, the, the answer is, uh, is on uh, uh, Kylian Mbappe. Kylian Mbappe is, uh, is a strong personality. Is a, mind, is a man who decides for himself. And I think if he says... I am ready to play, I want to play, I will play, then uh, I can't imagine Didier Deschamps not to, to let him uh, on the bench. So I bet that he will play, but everything will be on his own mind. As long as uh, the doctors have said that they don't need a surgery, but they need a, a protection mark, is like Dupont, the, the number nine of the French team of rugby during the World Cup. He did play with a protective mask after having his, uh, his uh, I don't know this in English, the, the w one piece of his body in the, in the face was broken. And he did play, I think, a uh, world-class player that don't want to miss uh, such uh, big tournaments. And I, I bet he will play. Yes, exactly. Uh, Eric, in our midst here in, uh, in uh, Germany, we have uh, Aston Villa legend Gabi Bonlahor. Gabby, you would think a player of such character and such a strong character as Mbappe will, will be saying to Deschamps, let me, I want out there. Let, let me get back out there. 100%. Yeah. I mean, as long as he can be protected with his mask, he's going to want to play, isn't he? And even last night when you had that 1v1 from the left, missing that chance, you just back him to come back next game, put in a performance. And that pace, Jim, Simon, that blistering pace, that's why he's one of the best players in the world. So I'm sure he'll want to be back playing against the Netherlands. Big game. And they want to get off to two wins that they have to. And they'll want them back, well, Simon. Yeah, I mean, your man, Eric, has just given you context. You've got a rugby player. Yeah. A, a different a different dynamic, but notwithstanding that, more, even more physical contact that's prepared to go back in. Kylian Mbappe has lots to say for himself. And one of the things that he needs to do is overcome adversity. They'll put a mask on and he'll go play um, because there's no reason for him not to. Yes. Uh, Eric, a single goal victory for the French. What has been the reaction to that win over Austria where you are in Paris and in France? Oh, reaction is about uh, disappointment uh, in the way uh, we did play football, in the way uh, we, had to struggle, we had to struggle to uh, have some chances. And the few one we have had one with Mbappe and the one on the very last minute with uh, uh, Giroud. Uh, there were uh, two very disappointing uh, miss chances. Uh, behind that, uh, we have a very positive point. I'm sure in England you will also uh, be happy about it. Is is Angolo Kante, the, the former Leicester, uh, wonderful world-class player, he is from uh, uh, coming from Saudi Arabia, and he did play a tremendous game. He was to us the man of the game. Uh, so we are happy on that, but uh, you know, first game and England can say the same, and uh, Italy can say the same, and Belgium can say even worse. First game are always uh, tricky, and you, it's difficult to make definitive judgment on a team after uh, the first game. What was the main point is to win that game and to be in a in a strong position for 
for the rest of the of, of the tournament and uh, uh, we are more focused on the Mbappe situation than on the uh, the way we did the poorly won the, that game. I think that's right, Gabby, isn't it? As Eric says, the win and only the win is what mattered in the first game. Oh, of course, but you know the French see we're winners, aren't they? Winning tournaments. Us here, we haven't won a tournament since 1966. Pundits, fans are going to be a bit looking at the, the English, the way we played. Can we do better? Can Foden do better? Can Harry Kane do better? Can we make subs at the right time? But when you look at the French team, they know how to get results. They know how to win tournaments. So I'm sure there's less negativity with the French media. Yeah, but you're used to winning, Sam. But you've also got to put context on it. The game was a better game to watch. It was a more fluid game. It was more dynamic. The Austrians are a better team than the Serbians and has, let, has been proven over the last f sort of 14 games that they've been a very compelling side. And if, with respect to what Eric's just said, there was a litany of chances that the French had. Yeah. You know, whether it was Griezmann missing by millimetres inside the box from a, from, a, um, from a slide pass or whether it was, was Giroud or Mbappé missing a sitter. I mean, one of those goes in, you've got a comfortable 2 0. But the, the bottom line is, French, the French looked a decent side going yeah. forward. There were some questions about them defensively. And then Golo Kanti, if he's the best player on the they've field, got, then fantastic. They've got so many options, though. I mean, you look at the, the squad of players Mbappe, Turam, Dembele, Mouani, Conan, didn't even get off yesterday off the bench. Giroud on the bench, Kamavinga, Shumeni, Kanate, all these players. Mendy, left back from Real Madrid on the bench, Barcola. They've got so many options. That's why they're going <laughs> to be the team that goes yeah. and wins it for me. But yeah. they're open, aren't they? They're open. Yeah. And England can play against teams like that. And if our front six are what we thought, I think they are, then it's about what we do. If we get the French at some point, I, w I don't look at the French and go, oh, we, our niches start knocking. We know where the danger is. We know that Walker can yes. put Mbappe in his pocket if he wants to. Yes. He's done it before. And so with that in mind, the French, I thought we were a good side to watch last night. I thought it was a really good game. And I don't think there will be the hysteria in France that maybe some of our British press have overlaid onto the game. But Is that because they're, they're used to winning tournaments and we're not? Maybe. We were discussing it off air, wasn't it? Yeah. About the, we are the architects of our own downfall. We're the ones that bring out songs like It's Coming Home. Yeah. You know, We constantly tell everyone about our FA gave the world the game and constantly you know, telling everyone about our Premier League being the best in the world. And yet our tournament football in international level exactly. brings us into a part where we constantly flatter to deceive. Eric, uh, over in Paris, how are you French viewing England in this tournament? Played 1-1, one, one, one. Bellingham, Sean, and we expected that. But what, what do you, as a, the French nation, expect to see from England? Do you think they'll, they'll be there come semi-final, come final? You know, every time before the tournament, we look at England as a, as a real underdog and a, a very dangerous team uh, to play against. And also, we, like you, always uh, regard England as, a, as a, a team who never achieve, who is so close to achieve, like uh, uh, in the final of uh, the Euro, uh, the, you, you play home against Italy. We always have the feeling that the next tournament will be the good one. And uh, uh, each time it's a bit of a, of a disappointment. I mean, when I say disappointment, it's because I have been working for 30 years following England uh, for l'équipe and I feel like uh, an English fan at a certain extent so uh, to me uh, it's something I would dream of to see uh, England uh, achieving uh, uh, to win a tournament in 66 I was born but I was too I, I was so much too 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 young to really entertain to about it, it. But, uh, right yeah to remember it yeah. but uh, you know uh, one time you you must win a tournament i mean you don't have anything less than we do in terms of the quality of the player but as uh, your 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 guest have just said uh, we have the culture of winning we don't need to play well to win we know how we can win a game without having too many chances we know that we can rely sometimes on one player like Mbappe, but we know we can also rely on team spirit and the cultural uh, will, defensive maybe sometimes, will of Didier Deschamps, not to be the showman, but to be the winner man. Okay. Eric Bilderman, not for the first time. Thank you so much for joining us. Merci bien uh, Merci. this morning. Eric Bilderman, of course, uh, working for L'Equipe, uh, as he has done for many years, hugely respected uh, French journalist. Go Underdog. on. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt of not being his mother tongue, but qualifies England as a underdog. Hmm, interesting. Well, I, I suppose by that he means about is, is there a lack of winning mentality? As Gabby was saying there, French serial winners, England haven't won in 58 years. Sure.
Sure, but so I mean, I don't, he's not I, wrong. I was nine when you won the World Cup. Interesting to see that, it's, that in the French perception of England is that they go into tournaments as underdogs. It's an interesting qualification. So by definition, they must have a viewpoint that they install themselves because we don't think we're going into this tournament. I think a lot of the British press and the bookies are suggesting oh, that England are going in as favourites. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No. No. I, I get where you're coming from. Meantime, the Serbs and the Serbs fans have dumped uh, their people in a bit of hot water this morning here in Germany. We'll, we'll get to the bottom of that very shortly. Uh, and we're coming to you live from Dusseldorf and Talk Sport. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6 a.m. on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.